For today, I will teach you how to compute the variance or variance, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation for ungrouped data. Coefficient of variation is also known as relative standard deviation. We start with a set of data that is presented not in a frequency table. Because if the data is presented in a frequency table, we use a different formula. Consider this set of data. This raw data is not presented in a table with frequency. And for this set of data to calculate the variance, we use the following formula. The sample variance is denoted by s to the power 2 or s squared. And s squared is equal to n. n is the sample size or the number of values given in the set of data. In our example, n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. n is multiplied by summation of x squared, where x here is represent this represents these numerical values. So each of these values in this given set of data is taken as x, and we take the square of each x, and then we get the sum of the squares of the x, and multiply the summation by the sample size n, which is 7. And this symbol is the Greek letter sigma for summation minus the square of the summation of x. Here we get first the sum of the values. We add all these values and the sum we raise to the power 2 or we take the square of the sum of x. In the first term, in the numerator, we get first the square of each value and then we add the squares of the values. And this difference is divided by n minus 1. So we start by taking the square of each x. And these given values are the x. And we use our calculator to calculate the square of each x value. And we start with 23, 23 is square. Twenty-three square is five two nine five hundred twenty-nine. And we get the square of twenty-five. Twenty-five square is the same as twenty-five multiplied by twenty-five. And that should be equal to six hundred twenty-five. We check using our calculator. Twenty-five square is six two five. Next, we get the square of thirty-one. Thirty-one is square, or thirty-one multiplied by thirty-one. And we get nine six one. Next, we get the square of 34, 
or 34 multiply by 34. And we get 1,156. And now we get the square of 37 or 37 by 37. get 1,369. Next, we get the square of 48, or we multiply 48 by itself. We get 2,304. And 50 square, that should be 2,500, we check using our calculator. We get 2,500. Now we get the sum of each row, the summation of x. And we also get the summation of x squared. You get the sum of each row. For the sum of the first row, we get the summation of x. For the sum of the second row, we get the summation of x squared. We add 23 plus 25 plus 31 plus 34 plus 37 plus 48 plus 50. Plus 31 plus 34. Plus 37 plus 48. Plus 50. And we get 248. We also get the summation of the second row. We add 529 plus 625 plus 961 plus 1156 plus 1369 plus 2304 plus 2500. We have 529. Plus six two five plus nine six one plus eleven five six plus thirteen sixty nine plus two thousand three hundred four plus twenty five hundred. And we get 9,444. We now compute the variance or variance denoted by S squared for sample variance. S squared equals N. Sample size or the number of values given is 7. Multiply by summation of X squared equal to 9,444 minus summation of x 248 raised to the power 2 divide by n 7 minus 1 We multiply 9,444 by 7. And we get 66,108. Minus the square of 248 
or multiply 248 by itself. So 48 is square. We get 61,504. Divide by 7 minus 1 is 6. In the numerator, we get the difference of 66,108 minus 61,504. And we get 4,604. And 4,604, we divide by 6. We get 767. Round off your answer to two decimal places. 767.33. Now, this is the variance. The standard deviation is defined as the principal root of the variance or variance and the principal root of a positive real number is defined as the positive root of the positive real number. Again, standard deviation is defined as the principal root of the variance. And principal root is defined as the positive root of a positive real number. So to get the standard deviation of this set of data, which is only a sample, we get the square root or principal root of 767.33. And the standard deviation is denoted by a small s. The standard deviation denoted, the sample standard deviation denoted by small s is defined as the principal root or the positive root of the variance denoted by s squared. So the positive root of the variance, the variance is 767.33. We take the square root of 767.33. And we get 27.70 to two decimal places. The positive root 767.33 has actually two roots. Positive 27.70 and negative 27.70. And the principal root is the positive root. Positive 27.70. And this is the standard deviation, which is equal to the square root of the variance denoted by S squared equal to 767.33. Now we proceed to compute the coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation is denoted by CB and is also known as the relative standard deviation. The coefficient of variation or CB expresses the standard deviation as percentage of the mean. And we write the formula for computing the coefficient of variation. Again, the coefficient of variation is expresses the standard deviation as percentage of the mean. And so the coefficient of variation is also known as relative standard deviation because coefficient of variation is computed relative to the mean of the sample. 
and to write this as a percentage, you multiply the quotient by 100%. In order to calculate the coefficient of variation, we need to compute first the mean. And we already have the standard deviation, 27.70. And from our previous lesson, the mean denoted by x bar for sample mean is equal to summation of the values of x divided by the sample size. Our summation of x values is 248 and our sample size is 7. We divide 248 by 7 and we round off the answer to two decimal places. Two hundred forty-eight divided by seven to two decimal places is thirty-five point forty-three. Hence, the coefficient of variation is now equal to standard deviation twenty-seven point seventy. divide by x bar or the sample mean which is equal to 35.43 and multiply by 100% after you multiply by 100% you round off the answer again to two decimal places we divide 27.70 by 35.43 press equals equal sign and multiply by 100% now round up the answer to two decimal places and we get 78.18% Before we have an example for computing the various standard deviation and coefficient of variation for a set of data presented in a frequency table, we will have one application of coefficient of variation. For our second example, we take a simple application of coefficient of variation or relative standard deviation. Consider the following given information. We are given five programs, the number of students in each program, the mean of the students in the program, and the standard deviation for each program. Now we are asked to rank or to determine which program performed the best based on the mean. We also want to rank the students or their program based on coefficient of variation and determine which program or group of students perform the best or which group of students has the best performance and we will find that using the mean and coefficient of variation Based on the mean, the highest mean is 93.45. Hence, based on the mean, the group PTOT has the best performance because it has the highest mean of 93.45. And this group is rank 1. The second highest mean is 91.37 for the BSN group. So this group has the second highest, the second best performance with the second highest mean of 91.37. Thus the BSN group is ranked two or second. The third highest mean is 88.06. 
Therefore, the MVP group has the third highest or the third best performance with the third highest mean of 88.06. Hence, MVP group is ranked third or three. And the uh, next highest mean next to 88.06 is 87.12 for the RDT group. This means that the RDT group has the fourth best performance with the fourth highest mean of 87.12. And among the five programs, the PT, the sorry, the RT group has the lowest mean of 84.61. Therefore, the RT group is ranked last or fifth or five because it has the lowest mean of 84.61. That's based on the means of the five programs. The group with the best performance is the PTOT group with the highest mean of 93.45 and that group is ranked first or one. And the group with the second best performance is the BSN group with the second highest mean of 91.37 and therefore the BSN group is ranked two. And among the five groups, the RT group is ranked last or fifth, or the RT group based on mean has the lowest performance with the lowest mean of 84.61. Now we will rank again the five groups based on the coefficient of variation. The advantage of using the coefficient of variation is that it uses not only the means of the five groups but also the standard deviation deviations of the five groups and we express each standard deviation as percentage of the mean so to calculate the CV for each program we divide each standard deviation by the mean and multiply by 100% as we have shown in the formula earlier for the MDT group, we calculate the coefficient of variation. We divide 7.04 by 88.06 and multiply by 100%. 7.04 divided by 88.06. Press equals and multiply by 100%. And then round, your, round off your answer to two decimal places and you should get 7.99%. Next, we calculate the coefficient of variation of the second group, the RDT group, by dividing the standard deviation 5.32 by the mean of RDT group 87.12 and multiplying the quotient by 100%. We have 5.32 divided by 87.12. Press equals and multiply the quotient by 100% and round off your answer to two decimal places. And you should get 6.11%. Next, we calculate the coefficient of variation of the BSN group. We divide 9.28 by the mean group 91.37 and multiply the quotient by 100%. We have 9.28 divided by 91.37. Press equals and multiply by 100%. 
and round off your answer to two decimal places and you should get 10.16%. Next, the coefficient of variation of the PTOT group will be by 12.94 by the mean 93.45 and multiply the quotient by 100%. 12.94 divided by 93.45. Press equals and multiply by 100%. And you should get 13.85%. And lastly, the coefficient of variation of the last group, RT group, is obtained by dividing the standard deviation of the group 3.76 by the mean of the group 84.61 and multiplying the quotient by 100%. We have 3.76 divided by 84.61 Press equals and multiply by 100%. And round off your answer to two decimal places, you should get 4.44%. The coefficient of variation is said to be standardized because the highest possible value of coefficient of variation is 100%. Now, based on the coefficient of variations, the group with the best performance is the group with the lowest coefficient of variation. And the lowest coefficient of variation here is 4.44 for the RT group. Therefore, the RT group based on coefficient of variation with the lowest coefficient of variation has the best performance. And RT group is ranked first or one. And the second lowest coefficient of variation is 6.11 for the RDT group. Therefore, the RDT group has the second best performance with the second lowest coefficient of variation of 6.11%. And so, the RDT group is ranked second or two. And the third lowest coefficient of variation is 7.99 for the MedTech or MDT group. Therefore, the MDT group is ranked third or is the group with the third best performance because it has the third lowest coefficient of variation of 7.99%. And the next to 7.99 is 10.16% for the BSN group. Therefore, the BSN group is ranked 4 because it has the fourth lowest coefficient of variation. And the group with the highest coefficient of variation of 13.85% is the TTOT group and it is ranked last or fifth because it has the highest coefficient of variation. Now, by inspection of the given information, based on the mean, the PT OT group has the best performance because it has the highest mean of 93.45. But considering it the standard deviation of the group, the PT OT group has the highest standard deviation of 12.94 that resulted to the highest coefficient of variation of 13.85. 
Now, although the the RT group has the lowest mean of 84.61, for which reason it is ranked last or fifth based on the mean, it has also the lowest standard deviation of 3.76 which resulted to the lowest coefficient of 4.44%. Now what does a low coefficient of variation indicate? A low coefficient of uh, variation indicates that the scores of the, of the students in a given program or group are closer or are scattered closer around a central value such as the mean. So although the, the mean score of the students in the RT group is the lowest among the five programs, the scores are very close to 84.61, to the central value mean of 84.61. That means there is a a sort of homogeneity and consistency among the scores of the students in the RT group. Now, although the PTOT group has the highest mean of 93.45, it has also the highest standard deviation of 12.94. That resulted to 13.85% of coefficient of variation. And this high coefficient of variation indicates that the scores of the students in the PTOT group are widely spread or dispersed from the central value or mean of 93.45. That means the scores of the students are sort of inconsistent or not homogeneous. They are widely spread from the central value or mean of 93.45. So you can see how the rankings of the five programs differ or change, change when you consider coefficient of variation that takes into account not only the mean but also the standard deviation of the group. We now have an example where the given data are presented in a frequency table such as this one. They say frequency distribution table where X represents the scores and F represents the frequency. Hence, the frequency of three means that there are three students with a score of 19 or the numerical value 19 three times in the distribution of data and you can see that the value of x 23 has the highest frequency of 5 and from our lesson before the value or element with the highest frequency in a frequency table is the mode as here in this frequency table, the mode is 23. But for this set of data, we will compute the variance, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. And when there is a frequency table given such as this one, we use a different formula. And it is this formula. If there is a frequency table given, such as this one, and you are asked to compute for the variance, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation, you start by computing the variance denoted by S square for sample variance using this formula. The difference of this formula from the formula we had earlier is that X squared is multiplied by F and X is multiplied also by F. Hence, to compute for the variance, we start by multiplying x by f.
multiply the frequency by x, we have 3 multiplied by 19 or 19 multiplied by 3 is 57. Five multiplied by twenty three is one hundred fifteen. We have five multiplied by three is fifteen. Carry one. Five multiplied by two is ten plus one is eleven. Four multiplied by thirty one is one hundred twenty four. We have 2 multiplied by 48 is 96. And 1 multiplied by 50 is 50. And we get the summation of fx. We add 57 plus 115 plus 124 plus 96 plus 50 using our calculator. We have 57 plus 115 plus 124 plus 96 plus 50. And the summation of the product Fx is 442. Next, we find the summation of the product f and the square of x. And we start by getting the square of each x value. We get the square of each x value. We start with 19. 19 square is the same as 19 multiplied by 19. And 19 square is 361. Next, we get the square of 23. 23 square is 23 multiplied by 23. And we get 529 for 23 is square. Next, we get the square of 31. 31 is square or 31 multiplied by 31. And we get 961. Next, we find the square of 48. 48 is square. Or 48 multiplied by 48. We get 2,304. And the square of the last x, 50, 50 square. Or 50 multiplied by 50. And we get 2,500. Now we multiply the square of each x by the corresponding frequency. We do not need to get the summation of x squared because summation of x squared is not in the formula. What we need is summation of f multiplied by x squared. We start by multiplying 361, the square of 19, by the corresponding frequency 3, or 3 multiplied by 361.
we have 3 multiply by 361. And we get 1,083. Next, we multiply 529, the square of 23, by the corresponding frequency 5. Or 5 multiplied by 529. Five by five hundred twenty nine, we get two thousand six hundred forty five. Next, we multiply nine hundred sixty one, which is the square of thirty one, by the corresponding frequency four, or four multiplied by nine six one. And we get 3,844. Now we multiply 2,304, which is the square of 48, by the corresponding frequency 2, or 2 multiplied by 2,304. Two multiplied by two thousand three hundred four, and we get four thousand six hundred eight. Lastly, we multiply two thousand five hundred, the square of fifty, by the corresponding frequency one, or one multiplied by two thousand five hundred is two thousand five hundred. Now we get the summation of the last row. We add 1,083 plus 2,645 plus 3,844 plus 4,608 plus 2,500. And that's the summation of F multiplied by X squared. We have 1,083. Plus two six four five plus three eight four four plus four six zero eight plus two thousand five hundred and we get fourteen thousand six hundred eighty. Now we are ready to find the variance except for the value of n. In a frequency table, the sample size is the sum of the frequencies. So we need to get the sum of the first row entries. The sum of the frequencies is equal to n. And it's easy to get the sum of F. We have 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 15. We now compute the variance denoted by S squared. N is 15. Multiplied by summation of Fx squared is 14,680. Minus summation of fx, our summation of fx, the sum of this row is 442. And we raise 442 to the power 2.
the difference in the numerator, we divide by 15 minus 1. We first multiply 15 by 14,680. And we get 220,200. Minus the square of 442. We raise 442 to the power 2. Or multiply 442 by itself. And we get 195,364. And the denominator is 15 minus 1 equals 14. We now get the difference in the numerator. We have 220,200 minus 195,364 and we get 24,836. The difference 24,836 we now divide by 14. And we get 1,774. One thousand seven hundred seventy-four is the variance or variance of this sample of data denoted by s to the power two, and the standard deviation again is the principal root of the var variance or variance. So we we take the square root of one thousand seven hundred seventy-four to get the standard deviation. And we round off the answer to two decimal places. 1,774. We get the square root. And to two decimal places, we get 42.12. Now we compute the coefficient of variation. The coefficient of variation, as we said, as I said earlier, expresses the standard deviation, 42.12, as percentage of the mean. Now we need to get the mean. If you have a data in frequency table, the mean is equal to the summation of fx divided by the sample size n. And our summation of fx is 442, we divide 442 by the sample size n, which is 15. So we divide 442 by 15 using our calculator.
and to two decimal places we get 29.47. Our standard deviation is 42.12 and we divide this by the mean 29.47. And the quotient we multiply by 100%. We start by dividing 42.12 by 29.47 and multiply the quotient by 100 and round off the answer to two decimal places. We have 42.12 divide by 29.47 multiply by 100 and write the percent sign we get 142.93 And this is a very large coefficient of variation because the standard deviation is also very large. And you can see from the given data that there is a large gap between the highest and the lowest values. The range is large. The difference between the highest and the lowest value range is large. So we expect the standard deviation to be also large and so is the coefficient of variation. For your practice, please try the following exercises. In number one, you are required to find the variance or variance, standard deviation and coefficient of variation for each set of given data. In letter A, you have and group data we presented without frequency table. In letter B, you also have ungrouped data but summarized in a frequency table. In number two, determine which group which group has the best performance based on mean and coefficient of variation. In the first column, you find the four groups denoted by one, two, three, four. Second column, the number of values in each group. Third column, x bar, the mean of each group. And the last column, the standard deviation of the measurements. These are measurements. You have 23 measurements in group 1, 15 measurements in group 2, 31 measurements in group 3, 20 measurements in group 4, the mean measurements in group 4, with 20 measurements is 8.16 with a standard deviation of 0 0.03. And you will find which group has the best performance using first the mean and then using the standard, uh, sorry, the coefficient of variation also known as relative standard deviation. And that completes our lesson for today. In the next lesson, we will take up the presentation of data in group data or frequency table for group data. Thank you for joining me in my class today.